yeah, Platinum Vow put out this video called The Rise and Fall of the Scarlet Crusade. The Scarlet Crusade's embarrassing rise and fall, actually. A lot of people wanted me to watch this. I haven't really gotten to do it yet, but I feel like we should watch it in WoW. It is some very epic WoW lore. Platinum Vow makes some really, really, really cool videos. So I think we should watch this, okay, guys? Let's look at this. I really like the... Uh, I like, like, the early lore of WoW. I think, um... It, maybe, maybe it's because of nostalgia. Maybe it is, like, rose-scented classes. I'm not gonna lie. It might be, but... I, just, I like the Scarlet Crusade, like, the Lich King, the Scourge. All that stuff is interesting to me. And, like, I'm the type of person that, like, looks up random lore, um, lore stuff about the game, too. I'm not. I'm serious. No, I am serious. Like, I like it. I think it's it's cool and it's fun. Thank you for the sub, though, uh, Olio. <laughs> Thank you. I like it. I, I think it's interesting, right? Because it's like... It, it feels like a world of Warcraft when you when you read about this lore. And it feels like there's actually, like, societies within the games and different, like, cultures and stuff. And I think that makes the game feel a lot more sick. And it, it, it's something that makes, like, MMOs feel really interesting to delve into when there's, like, some deep lore in this, right? Um, but let's watch it, guys. Let's watch it, okay? Platinum Mall. Can you not see it? Oh. Brothers and sisters, there is but one way to wipe the scourge from the face of Azeroth. The Scarlet Crusade offers you the protection that you so you. desperately desire. And if it. you pledge yourselves to us, surely we will reach our ultimate goal. Surely. Defy us, and you will be dispatched in a blaze of golden light, unlike any you have ever witnessed. The Scarlet Crusade is one of the more unique... Dude. Dude. Enemies you'll face while exploring Azeroth. On yeah. the outside, they might seem like your normal group of everyday paladins, but uh -huh. in truth, they are a vengeful group of fanatic worshippers of the light who destroy all who don't share their radical views. Yep. Their history is one of sympathetic origins, but the corruption and the inevitable downfall of their crusade was all because of the underlying deceit within the heart of their organization. <laughs> it's one of those things where, like, they want to do really well and they think in their mind they're doing something amazing and really good, but they're being corrupted, right? So they, they don't know that what they're doing is bad. <laughs> I think that's cool. Look at those First, pancakes First, a and quick Herod. word from today's sponsor. Oh! Keeps. Look, dudes, because uh, most of you are dudes. Did oh. you know that two out of three dudes experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? Okay. Well, thankfully, Keeps it's... can help prevent those precious hairs from falling off your head with Nobody their FDA-approved medication for hair loss. The I... best thing about Keeps is you can get treated right from the comfort of it's your own home. It's not targeted ads. It's an ad he put in the video. I have a mature hairline. It is not balding. It's mature. Gilson, um, have you thought about getting Keeps? I don't know what that is. Thank you for the 12 months, though. Uh, 13 months to arrest. Thank you for the T1, 13 months. I don't know what keeps... I don't know what that is, though, but... Oh, that's the balding thing! Fuck you! Come on, man! Stop! Stop! I don't need that. I have... It, it's called having a mature hairline, boys, okay? Come on, bro. And Crashing, thank you for the 1k bits. I'm really happy you like the YouTube. Hopefully you enjoy the streams as well. Thank you very much, man. Okay, let's keep watching, okay? It's it's not targeted ads. It's just... Whatever. By signing up online and getting connected with a doctor who helps you in your mission to restore your luscious locks. And remember, it's important to act fast as the sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you can save. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash platinum or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. That is K-E-E-P-S dot com slash platinum. Dude, he did that on purpose, man. I swear to God, dude. I... Uh -huh. Oh. The third war has just concluded on Azeroth. 
the kingdom of Lordaeron has been totally destroyed by the Scourge after the kingdom's prince, Arthas Menethil, betrayed his people oh. Oh. and allied with the undead and killed Gazoo, his own father Gazoo. and his Thank mentor Uther. The group of paladins called the Knights of the Silver Hand was disbanded, but these crusaders continue to fight to defend fortified settlements where survivors cling to life. One of these paladins was a mountain of a man named Sadan Dathrohan, who was one of the okay. original founders of the Knights of the Silver Hand. Okay. Dathrohan's significance is not because of his accomplishments, but because of his defeat. He's a chat. During an incursion Wait, into the burning city of Stratholme, Dathrohan was separated from his fellow paladins. Oh, shoot! Dude, he's badass! He could cut down the undead with ease, but there was more than shambling zombies in this cursed Look at that. city. Huh? Know that I am Balnazar. Know that you are but a pawn in plans beyond your reckoning. Oh, oh I don't care. You cannot fight my will. You are mine. You are out of your league, Paladin. Satan Dathrohan had fallen right into the Dreadlord Balnazar's trap. The demonic mastermind's ultimate plan was to possess his body and infiltrate the Order of Paladins and pull the strings behind the scenes and destroy them from within. I've been waiting for you, Paladin. Know that I will rip the soul from your flesh and make your body my own. What is that? Oh! Is that the last? Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so that's why. It's that guy. That's the last guy in Strat As Balnazar infiltrated their defenses, a paragon of light traveled from the west. High Lord Alexandros Ooh, Mograine was one of the original founders of the Knights of the Silver Hand. Armed with a holy artifact called the Ashbringer, the Paladin could cleave entire armies of undead in twain and leave only ash in his wake. It's like me in raids, guys. That, that's, when, that's when I like to pop cooldowns on my warrior in raids. Just absolutely blast. It's like I'm wielding the Ashbringer, right? It's how it is. Trust me, boys. When we get on the when we get back on raiding on the warrior in TBC, when once we get the war glaze and everything like that, boys, we're gonna pop off. It's gonna be crazy damage. Trust me. I cannot stress enough how much of a badass Mograin was. He was like the master chief of paladins, who was a beacon of light for the downtrodden people of Lordaeron. Okay, I'm gonna say it. All right, close your ears if you don't want to hear it, but I'm going to say it right now. I'm saying it. Okay. I think it will be sick to have like some sort of not it doesn't even have to be live action it's like some sort of like a series or something on some of the heavy wow lore like if it's a Scarlet Crusade or like the Lich King or Arthas like it, it could be if it's done well it could do so good like it doesn't even have to be live action it could also just be like Arcane you know Arcane in League of Legends how they did it it could be like that too it could be like an animated series it will be the potential. There's so much good and awesome lore they have, and it's literally there. Imagine if they made like a whole series like Arcane did, but they did it in a um, Blizzard cinematic style, not live action, just Blizzard cinematic style. Oh my god, dude! I would, I would be all over that, and I think a lot of people would be over that too, man. I, I really think so. Dick on the waist. No, that's not a dick, Deloxapi. That, that that's like a um <laughs> It's probably a dick. Okay, I don't know, man. Uh but anyway, I think that'd be sick. I I like cuz we all know like you can say what you want, guys, but Blizzard cinematics are amazing. And imagine a whole series made like that. Uh, it, it, if it's it's okay, the, okay, this is like the, obviously the, the the best one, right? The story of Arthas, right? Like Arthas' story, his upbringing as a kid, like his corruption into like, you know, madness and like with the calling of Stratholme, that'd be sick. But like, you can also do it on Scarlet Crusade or you can do it on, on Suljin, like the trolls. Like there's so many like storylines that are, would be amazing to follow. There's infinite potential, right? There really is. 
I would like that. that. I just wanted to get that out there real fast. Let's let's keep watching though. Sorry. Um, is the dark spirit trolls? Yeah, like anything. It would be so cool, right? He became such a legend that he was simply referred to as the Ashbringer. Oh, shoot. The Ashbringer also had two sons. One was named Darian. What is that chest? I'm, I'm so okay. You know who what? Has I'm not the most about. anime haircut in all of Warcraft, but more on him later. Okay. Uh, the other son was named Renault, who was taught He's the ways of the top. Paladin under Satan, Dathrohan. Like Satan. Oh. Over no. time, Satan Dathrohan, aka Balnazar, manipulated Renault. He preyed on his insecurities, knowing that he would always live in the shadow of his father. Uh, Renault gotta... is, and always will be, a lowly foot soldier. Man. A simple follower, and not a leader like his father. Satch. But, Satan offered him a proposition. Oh. If Renault was to kill his own father, he would be promoted to be a commanding officer in his Order of Paladins, and be granted the glory he justly deserved. Mm. Hey, I think you should kill your dad. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, wow, easy. that was uh, surprisingly. Wait, things to manipulate: Sargeras, Void Lords, Mancrick's wife, and the Soth, the Titans, the Light, Blizzard Riders. Oh, just wait till he gets to this one, boys. Yeah. Wait, easy. Renault then lied to his father telling him that his brother Darian was trapped within Stratholme and needed to be rescued. Alexandra's Mograine and yeah, his he advisor- never got their voice, you know. We killed him in the classic. Fairbanks traveled to the burning city, only to be overwhelmed by Scourge forces. I really like the editing. It's really nice. Come on. Come on, okay. The High Lord fell to the ground exhausted after obliterating every vile creature oh. that stood in his wake. <laughs> but it was at this moment that the High Lord's son delivered the ultimate betrayal. Oh. Ah! Oh, shoot. This act of pure evil and resentment corrupted the Ashbringer, turning it into a weapon of hatred instead of retribution. Ah! Renault fled, returning to the town of Hearthglen to tell everyone of the death of the Ashbringer. Oh shoot. So he killed his dad. So there's the Ashbringer, and then there's a bunch of zombies, and the zombies were like, Bwah! And the Ashbringer went, Bwah! And Whoa. then there was an abomination guy, and he went, Bwah! And then he went, <laughs> And then the Ashbringer died. Wow. And yeah, that's what happened. Oh. Mm-hmm. Some of the paladins were quite skeptical, to say the okay. least. Satan had been acting quite suspicious recently, and That's this us. tall tale didn't really seem to add up. You! It was you, Renault, that killed Alexandros. Oh, I was shoot. there. I saw it with my own eyes. The Ashbringer thrust right through your father's back. <gasps> Whoa, Fairbanks, uh, did you not see the puppet oh, no. show? Clearly, it was the- I know what I saw, you traitorous bastard! Fairbanks barging in and spilling this truth was the final straw for half of oh, the no. Order of Paladins, and they left instantly. They went to go create a new order that wasn't led by such sketchy and fanatic leaders like Satan and Renault. The ones that stayed decided that they'd just quarantine Fairbanks, who is now okay, deemed as yeah. unclean and insane. And by quarantine, I mean they executed him and threw him in a secret chamber in the cathedral. From the Oh, that's the guy! 
You guys know when you do cathedral and you go to the right and you, you click on that little like lever, like like that? That's the guy that's in there then. Oh, that's cool. It's all tying together, guys. From this point onwards, the priests, paladins, and all other followers of the light no separated shit. them. Wait, come on. Okay, let me just let me just be surprised here. Themselves into two different organizations. The ones that really didn't trust Satan oh, Dather hands left and called themselves the Argent. They look like you guys know in South Park that those like emo kids that hang out like behind the school. It looks like those, man. Those edgy emo emo kids. Gone. Led by Lord Maxwell Tyrosus. This organization is accepting of all outsiders, whether they be Horde, yeah, the goth. Alliance, or even Forsaken, and their main goal is to establish peace and destroy the Scourge. The other group is called the Scarlet Crusade, led by Satan Dathorhan. This organization is guy. extremely against any outsiders, especially if they aren't humans. For the Crusade! <laughs> Rather than establish peace, their main goal is to reclaim the ruined lands of Lordaeron once again and deliver retribution to the monsters that surround them. Satan made sure that he struck fear and paranoia into his followers, warning them that any outsiders could be unclean and could be secretly carrying the plague of undeath. Oh, Showing mercy to them would only pull them further away from their goal of eradicating all evil from Lordaeron. Helen! <laughs> now clearly the Scarlet I mean... That's a little bit too far, isn't it? I mean, I'm not gonna like sit here and like, you know, but I feel like that's maybe a little bit too far to do that to a little gnome. Crusade are not really good people, but let's look you at know? this from their perspective. You are a citizen of Lordaeron who had your entire family killed by zombies and your life destroyed. A plague wiped through your whole kingdom that came from infected grain of all things. So I mean, how could you not be nervous about other ways the plague could be transferred. I mean, the enemy you're fighting also has flying death fortresses. Yeah. So who knows what unholy tricks they might have up their sleeve. Also keep in mind yeah. that some citizens were saved and converted into the Scarlet Crusade. And if we simply just look at the map in classic, the Scarlet Crusade are the only ones getting shit done around here. They have three different fortified bases all yeah. around Lordaeron, while this Argent Dawn has a shitty camp. Yeah, I mean, he's not wrong. I'm not gonna, like, you know, not gonna, like, argue with that. And even shittier, run they don't even, like, the thing is, bro, you can't even repair this camp. Like, they, they literally don't even have a blacksmith to repair at. Like, they have that guy right there, but you can't even repair here. You have to go all the way over to Western Plaguelands to repair, you know? You can? No, you cannot. Not before the last patch of, uh, of Classic World. The, the last or the second to last patch, you can't repair on this place. You have to wait till the patch because they, they, they haven't installed it like the repairman yet. Rundown Church, this isn't about being morally good for some members of the Scarlet Crusade. This is about survival. Also, yep. their beloved capital city that was a deeply religious and known place of worship of the mm. light was taken over by zombies that look exactly like the ones that destroyed it in the first place. As a living human, how can you be okay with that? But yeah. also, from the Forsaken's perspective, who live in the capital city, they too are citizens of Lordaeron, who have retained all their memories from when they were alive, and are now treated as monsters, and this is the only place they really Such. can live. This is what makes the Scarlet Crusade such an interesting villain in WoW. They are a group of people who, from their perspective... That they're good people. In their eyes, they do what they think is best. I think, I think that's, that's a lot of the times that what, that's what makes a lot of lore and storylines very interesting. Whenever, like, whenever it's not just like a good side and a bad side, right? When, when like, both sides have their like, righteous paths that they're trying to follow in their own rights, it makes it a lot cooler and a lot more interesting to follow something, right? It's the same thing that they did with uh, Game of Thrones, right? Because Game of Thrones is like, oh, first you see the Lannisters and they're like, oh, the Lannisters are super evil people that like, you know, they're bad people. You don't want to do anything with those. And like, you know, the uh, the Starks are awesome. But you you slowly learn that everybody, every, like, everybody in the Game of Thrones world have their own reasons to why they do certain things, right? And nobody's perfect. And that's why a, a lot of, that's why in a lot of ways that like, 
if if you can manage to do this with the lore in your video game or anything, it, it it's very interesting, right? Because there's no good and bad. There's like just two sides, really, right? So yeah, um, guys, Game of Thrones. L listen, L Game of Thrones may have turned out uh, to become something a little bit interesting and uh, weird, but at the end, of the, like in the beginning, it was good. It was it's good lore, right? Like it was have pretty reasonable motivations to avenge their kingdom, but have been pushed and manipulated into paranoia yeah. and desperation that made them lose grasp of reality and turned into the villains on Azeroth. King Joffrey had no... Okay, stop. We're not going to go into the, the nitty-gritty details. Like, listen, King Joffrey had no... Shut up. Listen, it was just like the general idea with Game of Thrones, at least in the very beginning, the first four or five seasons... There's no strictly good or bad sides. They just all have the reasons as to why they're doing certain things, right? And that's what makes it so compelling and interesting, right? Because there's no like, well, this is bad, this is good. It's like, okay, well, this is bad if you look at it from this side, and this is good if you look at it from that side. You know, there's, there's multiple layers to it. Obviously, people do messed up things in the show. Yes, they do, but... They have their own reasons to do that, right? To protect their families or to do other things as well, right? So, so yeah, I'm not gonna go too too into detail of that, but I just wanted to say it that real fast, okay? I know the Microsoft thing happened. I, we, we, we looked at, we, we read all the things before this uh, video. Now that we know the insidious origins of the crusade, let's Joffrey go Joffrey was straight each... evil once he took power? No, he was not. He was a fucking asshole from the beginning. It's not like he suddenly became evil just because he became to power. It just, it was a lot more easily portrayed because he was in power now and he could let, he could like fulfill his like evil fantasies of whatever the hell he was doing, right? But like, it's not like he suddenly became evil. He was just always like that, right? It's, I'm done talking about Game of Thrones. We're done. Expansion in WoW and learn how the Scarlet Crusade was ultimately defeated. First, let's start with classic and get to know the oh. leaders of the Scarlet Monastery and their nefarious deeds. Tell me, Ooh. tell me everything. Within the dark depths of the temple, yeah, this guy's messed interrogator up. Vicious is known for unleashing his unrelenting sadism and cruel expertise against the enemies of the Crusade. During Classic, there's a quest that involves him stealing a wedding ring from one of his torture subjects yep. and giving it to his own wife, which is just, oh, so incredibly evil. Interrogator Vicious also makes an appearance within the Brawler's Guild, and the announcer oh, yeah. will yell, Well, wrap me in leather and tug my leash. It's Dungeon Master Vicious. <laughs> so, uh... What? Wait, who uh, says that? You can do with that information what you will. Release he's, the he literally, he's literally a leather man. <laughs> he's got some deep, deep dark fantasies. Hound Master Loxy trains yeah. his savage hounds of the crusade to sniff out the unclean and hunt them down within the forests of Tirasfall Glades. I really want to mention Game of Thrones. I'm not going to do it though. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop myself from doing it. But I, I, I just let it be known that I wanted to mention something uh, in reference to Game of Thrones, but I'm not gonna do it. You will not defile these mysteries. Within the library, Headmaster Mage Arcanus Doan combs over his tomes and teaches the fellow mages of the Crusade on how to master the use of the arcane to destroy the undead. That's actually, he might be a librarian, guys, but he's the most difficult boss in all of, all of SM, okay? And that's a fact. Ah, I've been waiting for a real challenge. Within the Hall of Champions, Herod is... He's badass. I'll be honest. Herod is literally just a shirtless guy with an axe who says, <laughs> Blades of Life! <laughs> but what's more interesting is the room he's in, which is called the Hall of Champions. Here we can see a bunch of different statues of uh, slain or missing members of the crusade. Oh, what's confusing? I actually never noticed those statues, really. Though is there are statues of elves and dwarves, which kind of goes against the whole ethos of the crusade in the first yeah. place. What's even funnier about this place is the names of the the people 
and how uncreative they are. We got Valia Twin Blades. Oh. She's got two blades. Oh. We got Invar One Arm. He's got oh. one arm. We got yeah. Yana Blood Spear. He's got a sp She's got a spear of blood. Spear. We got... Oh, wait, oh. hold on. Whoa. No, no, no. Wrong universe. But one of the more interesting ones is Holia okay. Sunshield, who's got a shield. But what's interesting about her is the plaque for the statue says that she died slaying a dreadlord named Belthras. And what's interesting is that okay. this dreadlord named Belthras returned 13 years later in-game as a mob Gul'dan summons during the Nighthold Raid in Legion. Which I thought is pretty neat. Anyways, okay. back to the Scarlet Crusade. The leaders of the monastery are located within the cathedral. Renault was given what he was promised, and was promoted to Scarlet Commander of the monastery, and watches over it with Sally Whiteman. Together we shall spread the Crusade's ideals across this land! Yes, you may. You may do that. Yes, ma'am. Now, I'd love to give you some backstory on who Lady Whitemane is, but she really doesn't have much of a backstory. Mm -hmm. Her family was all killed by the Scourge, and she swears to avenge them, which is the same story that a lot of the members of the Crusade have. Despite this, she is easily the most iconic character from the organization, because- I wonder why. <clears throat> because of her... Qualities? Of course, in game we go in and we kill all of these bosses, but that isn't what actually happens lore wise. Yep. What actually happens is depicted in the Ashbringer comics. Oh. What happens is Darian Mograin, that anime guy I told you to remember. He looks like that guy from Final Fantasy. No, is that the guy with the big sword? You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Is that Final Fantasy? Cloud? Yeah, Cloud, exactly. He looks like Cloud. Yeah, exactly, exactly, Cloud. Storms in- That's not- is that- is that- that's Final Fantasy, isn't it? It's not Kingdom Hearts, guys. Kingdom Hearts brings in everything. It's, uh, he's from Final Fantasy originally. Kingdom Hearts basically just takes everything in and makes like a big... Like, mix of everything. Final Fantasy VII? Okay. Andrew Ramus with the Argent Dawn and kills his father Alexandros Mograine, whose body was resurrected by the Scourge and is now one of the Four Horsemen. Darien then takes the corrupted Ashbringer to the Scarlet Monastery, and the ghost of Alexandros Mograine decapitates his own son. Oh shoot! He doesn't even look at him! Dude, that's badass. I mean, it's messed up that he does it, but like, look at- dude, that's a badass villain. Players can experience this from Darien's perspective when they obtain the Corrupted yeah. Ashbringer in Classic and take it to the Scarlet Monastery Cathedral. So, lore-wise, Renault is the only guy to die, but everyone else is alive and well. Okay. The next expansion that involves the Scarlet Crusade is Wrath of the Lich King, and trust me, it isn't pretty. Oh, you sure. see, there is a part of- Yeah, Wrath is a very- So, if, you, if you've leveled here as a Death Knight, like, the lore, as like, when you're getting trained as a Death Knight, it's kind of messed up, man. Like, they do some messed up things, man, in the leveling zone. This is a really, really good starting zone, by the way. I think when Wrath comes out, guys, I might... I might main a Death Knight. We'll see. The Scarlet City Tears Hand, called the Scarlet Enclave, which was completely untouched by the Scourge we'll until now. The Lich King and his Death Knights invaded Death these lands in their Flying Death Fortress. Yeah. I'm not a bandwagoner. It's just, okay, I'm gonna have a Death Knight, I'm gonna have a Warrior, I'm gonna have a Shaman. I don't know which one I will main. Maybe I'll main my Warrior and then have a- I, I want to have a Death Knight, okay? Like, that's all I'm gonna say, boys. Okay, Death Knights are cool, so I would like to have one. Alright, but I still have my Warrior and Badouche, obviously. Okay? and laid the city to waste. Maybe a rogue as well. I mean, we could also go back to the rogue. We'll have to see. I mean, there's plenty of time to, like, think of what to do before, uh, before it comes out, right? This is the starting experience for the Death Knights and Wrath of the Lich King. And during this quest line, you slowly invade and mm. ultimately wipe out the Scarlet Enclave of all of its members and... This, this leveling experience, I think they did a really good job with the DK starting zone. I, I remember back in the day, I really liked it. I thought it was, uh, I thought it was super, super fun to do.
The starting zone has some of the most annoying quests in the whole game. I like like you know that one where you have to auto-attack the Scarlet guys with those pokers? Remember that one? I, I actually like this. I thought it was fun. Maybe it's because I was a kid and it was like new content. I enjoyed it. I liked the, the, the DK starting zone. And it, it all ends up with that epic like big fight where you gotta kill, uh, you gotta kill all the, 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 the things, right? I loved it. God, the starting zone sucked. But as Dude, the Enclave it was is being invaded, High General Bridget Abendus, daughter of one of the original founders of the Scarlet Crusade, claimed to have a vision from the light itself. Wow. The vision told her that she should take her most devoted followers of the Crusade and in journey to Northrend to continue their mission to purify all undead. Also, that is where the expansion takes place. This yep. migration would be known as the Crimson Dawn, and it would revive the Crusade to new glorious heights. The group of devoted followers were renamed to the Scarlet Onslaught oh, yeah. and set sail for Northrend. Lore. I'm excited for Wrath. Okay, I think it's gonna be fun. Okay, at this point, we can all assume it's gonna come out, right? I. Dude, Wrath just has something about it, man. I don't know what it is. Flying Death Fortress, again. In Northrend, I, I like they it, established man. multiple bases. The main two being New Hearth Glen and the Onslaught Harbor. The on and what, what am I gonna name, guys? I have my warrior, I have my row. <sighs> man, I don't know, dude. This is always the issue when the new when something new comes out. Like, what do I mean, right? Do I go my rogue? Do I go my warrior? Or do I go like Death Knight, right? I'm not gonna be. I'm not sure, man. <sighs> we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Rogue is nice. All tiers. I do like rogue a lot, man. But my rogue is not even level sixty or like level seventy right now, right? My rogue is still level sixty in TBC. I could actually level my rogue in TBC though. We'll see. Onslaught Harbor easily being one of the top five most underrated locations in all of WoW because of just so out of the way it is from everything else. Onslaught Harbor. Oh yeah. The priest in me likes when you confess your sins, oh. but the inquisitor in me likes to punish you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Commander! I see someone on the shore. <laughs> dude. What? Hey, I mean, I, all I'm saying By is, By the dude... light. Is that Admiral Westwind? Shit. On the shores of Northrend, Scarlet member Admiral Barian Westwind was found. Shit. He was the captain of a previous Scarlet ship that sailed to Northrend years ago and was presumed to be long dead. I mean, there's even a statue for him in the oh, Hall yeah. of Champions back in the Scarlet Monastery. Admiral Westwind assured his fellow Crusaders that he was the only one to survive on the ship and simply wanted to pledge himself to be an advisor for High General Abendus. Besides, he had been surviving in this hellish tundra for years, so surely he knew a thing or two about- <laughs> Just surely. kidding, you son of a bitch. It was actually the Dreadlord Malganus! Oh, All along! Malganus, I am eternal! Oh my god, he's eternal! So the Scarlet Onslaught was deceived for a second time by a Dreadlord, oh and god. Malganus manipulated his way up the ranks. But the real reason for the Scarlet Onslaught's involvement in Northren ultimately being a failure was uh. because of the overwhelming might of Horde and Alliance player characters. Together. I found that. I think. Um, I think that what she's about to say is going to make a lot of sense, and I will agree with her. That's what I think. Okay. Without proper guidance, crusades quickly become onslaughts. Yes, I agree. Okay, so let's jump to Cataclysm, where it's more of the same story. God the damn. Argent Dawn back in the Plaguelands made the best strategic decision of their life, and they allied with the player character. That's me. <laughs> Hearthglen was taken over by the Argent Dawn, and Tyr's Hand was still left in ruins after the invasion of the Death Knights. Also, Balnazar was defeated within Stratholme, leaving the Scarlet yeah. Monastery as the Crusade's last bastion of hope. 
During the Cataclysm, they revamped a lot of dungeon quests by putting the quest givers at the start of the dungeon. And the quest oh, yeah. giver for the Scarlet Monastery Wings oh, is yeah, one of my- I forgot about that. You didn't have to walk around and get all the quests, you could just like, instantly get them. My new favorite characters. It's Joseph the Awakened. You see, Joseph is a part of a group called the Scarlet Renegades. A okay. group who have realized the error of their crusade's ways and are attempting to overthrow their rulers. Why not just join the Argent Dawn? I don't know. I guess they think they just really look good in red. Anyways, yeah. Joseph seems- I mean, they do look good in red, though. I mean, they do look drippy, let's be honest. ...to be having problems of his own, as the further you progress through the dungeon, his name changes from Joseph the Awakened to Joseph the Crazed, and finally, Joseph the Insane, where he's found dancing in the fountain in the cathedral and has the best art of all time in the old World of Warcraft trading card game. Oh, shoot. So during the Cataclysm <laughs> War-wise is when all of the bosses die, except for Sally Whitemane. Why does everyone who comes to the Scarlet Monastery want to kill me? Am I out of touch? No, it is the heathens who are wrong. Yes, and in Mr. Pandaria, I the I, I think she's right. Scarlet Monastery was revamped. Instead of four separate dungeons, it was combined into two dungeons instead. The most notable difference is that all of the bosses have been changed, but they're kind of just like off-brand versions of the original bosses. That being said, oh, there are yeah. some interesting- I completely forgot about that. They changed the whole Mimi. Like they look, oh yeah. That's kind of weird ones like Flame Weaver Kogler, who is so ashamed by the Scarlet Crusade's embarrassing history, he has taken it upon himself to scorch the library and destroy all evidence of their embarrassing past. Everything must burn! None shall know the Scarlet Crusade's shame! Also, a lot of these new bosses have like really, really thick accents. Ah, stupid animals! I'll put you down after I kill these weaklings. My. Why did they give them axe? Fists are scarlet with your blood. <laughs> if you die, you die. To think you've come so far only to perish here. Okay, why is it all different accents too? I mean, I guess they're from everywhere. I suppose. I don't. I don't know. Eh. That guy was Russian. Yeah. Accents have always been a weird thing in the Warcraft universe because there isn't really a place in the universe where humans live that have identifiable characteristics of heavy Russian or German accents. They kind of just have them because they sound cool. The final <laughs> boss fight is still with Lady Whitemane and just some random dude named Commander Duran. We defeat them and with the help yep. from Lillian Voss, a complicated character I can maybe make a video about in the future, we make sure that Sally Whitemane stays dead forever. Ah, uh, she's gonna come back. She always comes okay, back. Okay, so in Legion, oh. the Death Knights fight their way through the Scarlet Monastery and resurrect Sally Whitemane to be one of the- f Oh, this is the legendary quest, right? I never really played Legion, so I don't really know much about Legion, but I, I, I know that the legendary quests like takes you to like some lore stuff. Four horsemen. And she's artifact, just uh, whatever, yeah. surprisingly okay with it after committing her entire life when she was living to killing undead for some reason. And finally, okay. the Scarlet Crusade had one small cameo in the Battle for Azeroth expansion. Near the Calston Estate in Tirisfall, there is a collection of pamphlets from a subgroup called the Scarlet Brotherhood, oh. and are filled with insane ramblings and, uh, yeah. Basically, the Scarlet Crusade have kind of just turned into conspiracy theorists. I'll spare you the details, but to sum oh. all of the ramblings up, they think Anduin is an undead loving traitor who is secretly trying to usurp control over Lordaeron by marrying Kali Menethil. Also, the Scarlet Brotherhood plans to team up with Greymane and kill all of the undead, then kill Greymane. And lastly, the Brotherhood says that they have secretly been raising the son of Kali Menethil, who will be the new king of Lordaeron. But Kalia has a daughter oh. and not a son, so that can't even be true. In the ex yeah, this is, it's a minor detail, you know. Exploring Azeroth Eastern Kingdom's book, it is stated that the Crusade was totally wiped out in Legion, and this group called the Scarlet Brotherhood is the only remnant of the Crusade we have left. So the idea of the Scarlet Crusade ever returning in Warcraft's story is 
unlikely. Yeah. They have been constantly losing ever since World of Warcraft came out, and their leaders have either been killed or raised into undeath. But what remains are the memories of one of the most interesting and iconic factions in all of Warcraft. The Silver Hand failed, Paladin. Join us. Yes. Take up the path of vengeance. Yes, we get it. You're <laughs> edgy. Congratulations. Can we move this along? Is that it? Good video! Dude, Platinum makes some really, really good videos, man. I really like the editing and like... He makes it funny. He makes like the lore fun and interesting, I think. Not that it isn't already, but like he really, really makes the, the storytelling feel really smooth. Um, check out my Patreon for exclusive content. I, I'll, I'll link the video in the chat, guys, if you guys want to give him a little like on the video. He makes some really, really, really nice stuff. So there it is, guys. Okay. Man, I really like the way that he does it. The old lore is so much more interesting than all of this new Implanetary Galaxy super villain lore. Dude, this is true, though. This is so true, man. Like, WoW lore now, it, it just feels so over the top and crazy, right? Like... Back in the day, it was just like Scarlet Crusade, you know, some bad boys with some bad thoughts. Um, or like Arthas, like a, uh, like a prince who became like corrupted and went in sicko mode, right? Like, I don't know, man. There's something about the old lore that's awesome. The one thing we forgot, the Shadowlands. You can find the Houndmaster Loxie as a ghost in Ravendrith, where his punishment is to be chased through the woods by dogs. That's kind of cool. Oh shoot, man, there it is, man. Like, I, I'm gonna say this again, guys, okay? I think, like, a anime, not an anime, like an animated um, series or, like, something like that with WoW lore could be amazing, man. It could be so sick, dude. Imagine, like, they did it like, you know, Arcane did or something like that, like, do, like, the Scarlet Crusade uh, thing or, like, do the Arthas or Illidan or, you know, the Sandalari Trolls. There's so many different story points you can pick and you can take. And let's be honest, they have, like, the... They have the funds for it. Like, they, they, they know how to make good cinematics, right? So, god damn, it would be sick, right? It would be really, really cool. Um, but yeah, there's the video, boys. There it is, man.